y'all. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing something a little bit different, sort of. It's kind of a favorite. It's kind of an anti-haul ish but i'm kind of smushing them together so today we're going to do hits and misses to start things off a, ba a major life miss is that i told a lie yesterday and it has me in a bit of a shame spiral um it wasn't a big lie it was just like a stupid lie but it has me feeling super icky on the inside in my heart in my soul in my skin I'm going to have to address that later and remedy that. I don't know why I told this lie. It hurts no one, it does not, nothing. It just kind of makes me look and feel stupid. The, the lie just kind of makes it seem like I have things to hide, which I don't, I don't know why I told this lie. So um, right now, we're going to use that energy to go through a whole bunch of other things in my life that are hits and misses. And hopefully the hits will make us feel good and the misses we can, you know, move on from in our life. That's kind of the whole intention here is that I've been feeling the, like, I, I've been struggling with the urge to purge lately as well. Uh, yesterday I went through all of my hair accessories. I have like a drawer dedicated to hair accessories and I filled like an entire bag and a half, like little teeny tiny kind of shopping bags with like hair ties and scrunchies and clips that I, and like pins and things that I just literally am not using. I have no interest in using, but I've just been hoarding them and holding onto them in this like, this in case of the, the what ifs and screw the what ifs we life is too short for for the what ifs if there's things in your life that are unnecessary let's just get rid of them and so the misses that are in my little pile here if they don't have alternate applications some of them do but if they don't we're just we're gonna move on to start though one hit which i've been enjoying all afternoon so far is a beverage, not an alcoholic beverage. I guess these days we're calling these mocktails, but essentially I've talked about this drink before. It is just cranberry juice, like 100% organic, unsweetened cranberry juice. So just a splash because it's super, super intense. Soda water, and then rather than having ice cubes, I put frozen strawberries in it, and it's just chef's kiss. Again, I guess we're calling these mocktails these days, whatever, it's just a drink. It's so good so hydrating and I was sitting outside for approximately five minutes while my previous video where I filmed this look was transferring to my computer so I was like I'm just gonna sip on this and it was delightful. The other miss before we get into it is this box which you can't really tell. Uh, it's one of those like Ikea boxes but you can sort of tell when I put it there. It was dirty. I didn't feel like hand washing it. I should have just hand washed it. I put it in the dishwasher <laughs> and I guess that cycle I put on like high temp wash and so the whole thing warped and there is no going back there's no fixing it I tried to like weigh it down with my like various weights and little kettlebells and things nope so this is going into the recycling or like to the curb I'm sure someone else will find a use for it but like big miss not the bin itself just the action okay let's just dig in I don't know if we're gonna go like in order like all hits and all misses i'm gonna switch it up a little bit the first hit which i talked about at the top of my last video where i filmed this look which you're actually gonna see next after this video is my naturium dew glow moisturizer spf 50. it is just such a hit for a chemical sunscreen i never thought i'd fall so in love i've got a few other chemical sunscreens that i've really enjoyed but this one has just been so lovely it doesn't irritate my skin it doesn't sensitize my skin now that it's quite humid here in Ontario it's a little too dewy but honestly like bring it on bring on the youthful dew for as long as my skin will do such a thing it's wonderful when I purchased this I did buy two so I already have a backup ready to go um and I think I have like probably two more uses out of it. There's like very, very little. It's like literally squeezing things off of the side of the interior of this tube. But this has been such a hit, such a delight to have in my life. And yeah, there's just, there's a number of things from Naturium that have really been 
a wonderful addition and I'm glad to have that one. Now I have one more sunscreen hit, uh, which is what kind of saved my life and my skin while I was in Whistler earlier this spring. It is the Blue Lizard Australian Sunscreen. This is the Sheer SPF 50 Face Lotion. This one is a mineral sunscreen and I had this one to start with on my Whistler trip, but quickly realized that even though it is an SPF 50, it was not strong enough at all for being up on a mountain in the sun where the sun is bouncing off the snow and then back into your face. No, I got so burnt my first day out on the slopes. <sighs> I was in pure misery. And every single day after that, I only wore this and was vigorously reapplying it every time I was on the chairlift, especially on my nose and my chin. Also just because it was like a little cool and I'm outside, my nose constantly runs. So like every time I was wiping my nose or blowing my nose, I was also wiping off the sunscreen. So I just kept this in my little fanny pack or in the front pouch of my ski jacket. And it was just truly a lifesaver. And yes, it is a mineral sunscreen. Yes, it says sheer, but you know, and anyone with a deeper skin tone, you know, if you're not straight porcelain, sheer only goes so far where a mineral sunscreen is concerned unless there's a tint in it. But this one, you know, rubs in pretty well. You can still sort of see that there is a cast to it. But that being said, if you're like out on a beach or you're out in the sun doing any kind of outdoor activity where you are experiencing extended sun exposure, who cares about a cast, you know? Your skin is more important and not getting skin cancer should be high on the list. So if you're looking for a mostly sheer, very nice and not too heavy mineral face sunscreen, the Blue Lizard is truly wonderful. Pretty much my only fashion miss for the moment is what looks like a most delightful bodysuit. I love a bodysuit. I will live in bodysuits. And this one is that like shiny material. It is Babaton. I bought it from Aritzia during one of their various sales. And it was just sort of sitting in my closet. It's long sleeve, square neck, thong back, snap crotch. Looked stunning on the models. On the website, I was super intrigued, but only put it on for the first time like two weeks ago, a week ago, because I kind of wanted something that was like a little bit fancier. Um, there was, you know, the potential of like an outing. So I wanted, I think it was for my friend Chani's birthday, actually. This was one of the potentials for my outfit that evening. As soon as I put it on, I wanted to rip it off. This is not a comfortable fabric at all. And even though with most Aritzia things, I am a double XS, this was, I think, too tight and you know size is really dependent on the make it size means nothing size of clothes means nothing you need to be putting on clothing that feels good to you not that is the size you think you should be but that being said more often than not i am a double extra small at aritzia just because i am a petite individual and so that is what i went for but this fabric is like it seems like it would be quite stress stretchy, but it was just prohibitive. It felt claustrophobic and it's just not a comfortable fabric. Sure, it's also like summer, so why would you wear a fabric like this that has no breathability? That's my own personal miss, but I don't think I will ever wear this again. And I think it's actually gonna go straight into the donation bin and like RIP to my money, but it is what it is. I'm so <laughs> deeply upset. Because again, I love a bodysuit moment. I love a long sleeve bodysuit. I love a square neck bodysuit. So aside from pretty much everything other than the fabric, this was a hit. I, I really do think it's just the fabric. Everything else about this style of bodysuit would have been chef's kiss, but this fabric is just not for me. And in fact, I should have known that because last year at some point, during one of Aries, like buy 10 pairs of underwear for, you know, $30 or $42. They had a really cute pair of like high-waisted underwear that was also kind of like a shiny material. Got those, 
put a pair on and was like, these are literally the worst. Why would anyone wear these as an undergarment? I'm going to keep a couple pairs just in case they like come in use for like costume ideas, but truly wretched. That's not a fabric I want on my body. <laughs> nope. The fabric that I'm wearing now is barely tolerable and it's like a lot softer and stretchier. <laughs> um, but no. Major major miss, nowhere near a hit. Similarly, uh, in terms of nowhere near a hit, we're, that's the only fashion miss. Um, but where do I even start here? I guess we can start, I have two facial sprays. This one is the Eco by Sonia uh, Certified Organic Skin Compost 2 Super Fruit Toner with Botanical Active Balancing Mist. Sounds great. I don't love the packaging. Never have, never did. But I bought this because it was one of those things from, you know, the Green Jungle Beauty Shop that was on a severe discount on one of their flash sales. And I was like, sure, I need a new toner. At the time, I 100% did. But I don't, I don't like anything about this. I think if the atomizer was maybe a little bit better, I would have given it a better chance, which is like something that has nothing to do with the formula itself. But overall, it's just a miss for me. The only thing that I enjoy about a spray is never to spray it on myself, it's spray it on a cotton pad. <laughs> so if it doesn't even spray onto my cotton pad well and like this part sticks, it's just, why? All I have been using this for is to like activate my soap brows and I'll probably still use it for that, but otherwise it's just a nope, never again, total miss. Ooh, a really delightful hit. Okay, this is the premium medicated topical balm from the brand Relief and it's 140 milligrams CBD, 80 milligrams THC, non-intoxicating. Comes in this little screw off, roll up, kind of like a deodorant tube style balm. It is almost completely done. The only stuff that's in there was like caught in the very base of the roll up part, which I like pulled that out and put everything back in here. So I have to like basically go in and get that with like a tongue depressor before I apply it. But I used this literally obviously to the very end. I got this from a local shop here in the city that I'm living in. I really, really enjoy it. I have Crohn's disease, so I've got a lot of tummy issues. Sometimes I get super bloated, super gassy for inexplicable reasons, can never really pinpoint why, like, especially if nothing in my diet has changed. Usually it's probably stress-related and like external forces, but this was such a hit. I would put this on my tummy at night before I would go to bed, so you know, wear like a nice, real high-waisted pair of like almost period panties. <laughs> Just the kind that like you don't care about getting stained or dirty and when you're using a balm like this it's always best I find to put if you're going to like put on clothes afterwards like you want something cotton or flannel that's going to absorb it and like preferably in a dark color so that is if there is any product transfer it's not going to stain and if it does stain you're not really going to notice it so this is for like old high-waisted underwear and like flannel pjs so I would put it on my tummy the like lower part of my tummy and then I have like a bean bag heating pad and I would do that and just fall asleep that way and while I was using this I was noticing a significant decrease in the kind of way that my tummy was bloating. It was just soothing and I was putting this on other aches and pains but specifically for my tummy I was actually noticing a real difference with this and I definitely want to go back to this local shop and pick up another one of these because I think it was super effective and I brought this with me on a ski trip as well and when my boyfriend fell at one point and like hurt his ribs we were putting this on and he also noticed a difference so definitely a hit sometimes you just some cbd products i find don't work some do i'm not really sure it could be a placebo effect but all that being said i did actually find this to be a hit and when i'm fully fully done every last little drop of this balm it will be coming back into my life because I really did like it. Another hit, which is like kind of unexpected, but also such a duh, like Captain Obvious was not living in my home <laughs> when this happened. And I think I have another one of those actually. Um, I don't know where it is. It's not in this bin, but sometimes Captain Obvious just abandons me entirely. And I find that super rude and offensive. Like, dude, help me out. <laughs> because, you know, I can't think of everything. So... This is one of my longest standing issues with eyelash curlers is that usually when you buy one from the store, you only get one replacement rubber to put in the little depression here. I don't know why. I don't know why you only get 
one extra. I don't think I've ever seen an eyelash curler with more than one, maybe like a couple extras, but like you go through them pretty quickly, especially if you're applying makeup every day. And like over time, it definitely wears down and they become less effective. But some eyelash curlers like this one from e.l.f., I really, really like. It's a, it's a great eyelash curler. I don't love that it kind of stays open. There was a clip originally to keep it closed, but that has gone the way of the dinosaur lost to the, I don't know, animals of time and chaos. <laughs> but it's, this is a really effective eyelash curler. I have another one floating around somewhere, which I just absolutely don't like. There's not enough, like, like pressure when you close it so it doesn't effectively curl my lashes but what I've always found frustrating is that like after you're done the like singular replacement what do you do with your eyelash curler like I've never seen at a drugstore like the ability to just buy the extra little like rubber inserts so like maybe a month or so ago I was like there has to this has to be a thing that you can just buy the replacements because it's so wasteful to just keep buying eyelash curlers like unless it legitimately breaks there's nothing wrong with this so there has to be a way that I can keep this in my life without having to go out and buy another one even if it is from elf and it's relatively affordable so of course you know Amazon my capitalistic arch nemesis came to the rescue and I managed to find so many options for eyelash curler replacements like whatever this little filler is and so this is just like a little box I think there's 30 in here and I think it cost me like maybe $11 which is pretty affordable and now I don't have to buy a new one again literally unless this breaks these are supposed to be like a universal size I do notice that it doesn't fit exactly but like once you kind of squeeze it a few times it really like locks in there and like it's an eyelash curler those things do go missing constantly they fall out whatever but just knowing that you have a backup like what a hit drugstores can we get on this because we should be selling these like elf hello elf you like to take everyone's ideas and make them your own so can you please like come out with a set of little eyelash curler rubbers or whatever these are called because we should be making these more accessible and like I don't want to have to keep going to Amazon for things that should be available <laughs> elsewhere you know I don't love buying from Amazon I don't love the idea of like putting money into Jeff Bezos's pocket <laughs> and I have been purchasing a lot of things from Amazon lately and I really don't like it on a moral level on a moral level it is a miss but on a practical level this is a hit and I'm so happy that I had this because it's gonna last me forever <sighs> anyways moving on a miss a miss that now looks absolutely freaking disgusting this is the clear brow gel brow mascara free to brow from Jason Wu. Jason Wu recently became available at Shoppers Drug Mart here in Canada, or at least here in my local vicinity in Ontario, uh, with like an end cap and everything. So I kind of got excited. I was like, ooh, the last time I heard about Jason Wu products was like when it, they first kind of hit the market and like only really it seemed to be like certain American beauty influencers had access to the brand. So because of that, I kind of wanted to try a few things out. <sighs> So far, not a single one of the Jason Wu products has even remotely impressed me. They've all been a miss, but this specifically was just like such a waste of my time and resources and money because all we you know, all I want in my life is a brow gel, a brow pomade that just holds my brows in place, especially when I don't want any kind of color. Like whatever happened today was great. My brows look fine. They're held in place. It's the NYX brow mascara, thick it, stick it thing great whatever but more often than not i just want a clear pomade to hold my brows in place i thought that this could be it at a reasonable price point at the drugstore and it's just not and it turned disgusting so quickly and i don't know maybe as like a society as a beauty community we need to move away from clear packaging where a clear brow gel is concerned because inevitably they're all going to look cloudy and disgusting like this and there's just something deep inside me that says mm, don't use that don't put that on your face like sometimes ignorance is bliss and I don't want to be enlightened in this way <laughs> but this is gross I don't like it it didn't do anything like it literally did not hold a single one of my brow hairs so 
because of that, it's literally just gonna go away. Also, I'm pretty sure that there's a ghost in my apartment or like something in a basket. And I keep hearing things other than the people upstairs. Scared, thank goodness it is daylight because I have the heebie-jeebies and if I was here alone at night and heard that, <laughs> I would be running. Anyway, so because this is a brow mascara, I don't really feel like it's something that I can share or pass on. So unfortunately, as a miss, it's gonna go straight into the garbage. Another miss, which has nothing to do with the formula, and let me just start that, that is the disclaimer on this product, but the color specifically was the miss. This is the Ritual Defeat Lab Access Release. It is the Thorn Bite Peptide Plump Creme Lip Oil. Now, I bought a set of three, so I got Rose Dew, Rose Crush, and the other one is Rose Bite. Rose Dew, Rose Bite, delightful, perfect. Rose Dew is kind of more of the clear gloss, and until literally yesterday when I was like, okay, I have to not have so many lip products in my, you know, backpack. I only just pulled it out, but it was something that I was using like on a daily basis and absolutely loving. And Rose Bite is like a deeper red. I'll show you, it's beautiful. And like, it still looks, it's pretty sheer still, but it has more of a color payoff and is closer in tone to my actual lips. But Rose Crush is, I find actually like almost more pigmented and more mauve leaning, mauve, however you wanna pronounce it. It's got more purple in it and thereby doesn't really work for me. I just, it's the wrong tone on my skin, on my lips. And that's the only reason why this is a miss. And I maybe put it on my lips twice. This will be passed on to my mom or my sister. I've got a bag going on of things that I'm kind of like beauty hand-me-downs that are going to go to them. And that is going into it. So it's, it's purely a miss because of the tone. The formula is beautiful. I cannot wait until they do like an actual public, like a a formal release of that product because it's beautiful and I think so many people are going to really, really love it. It's just, yeah, again, th this specific shade, Rose Crush, is just not for me personally. Okay, a hit, which is like, <laughs> this is <sighs> such an annoying kind of cliche hit, but like, I finally discovered, I think this is another like Captain Obvious <laughs> missed the mark on my life or should have been here to be like, duh. <laughs> um, it's just, a headband, obviously with a giant bow and like in the colors that Alana likes, but it's just a giant, you know, nighttime or morning time skincare routine headband. And I gotta say, like, could I have used any other of my headbands? My little alligator clips, certainly. But I find that my other headbands always leave my bangs kind of like stuck in a specific location and there's just something cute and like extra enjoyable about having like a big floofy headband to take off your makeup at the end of the night and like do your whole skincare routine and I've just been really enjoying this. It's also adorable. That helps. I got this from HomeSense for like maybe five dollars and I love it. I love her so much and it has just been like a life, a life hit. Just something so small and enjoyable and I don't find that it like super messes up my hair which is really important. I have very very stubborn bangs because of my cowlicks so like one one wrong move, one moment when they're held in the wrong place for too long and they will stay there and then ruin my life for the next day or so. So this has been just lovely and I know that like all of the beauty influencers have these and people make fun of them because we all put on giant headbands when we're doing our makeup but just let us be cute you know. Let us be cute. We're not hurting anybody with our giant headbands and now I'm one of us not hurting anybody with our giant headbands. Just let us. Let us have it. Maybe more people need to have giant cute headbands when they're washing their faces at night and it would make all of us just slightly nicer happier people. Think about that. Okay, another miss, which like isn't the most major miss in the world, but still something that I thought was worth talking about. This is the Bondi Sands Eye Spy Brightening Eye Cream with vitamin C and green coffee beans. For the packaging, I think it's super cute. I've been using a number of Bondi Sands products lately. It's an Australian brand, obviously. <laughs> 
and it's cruelty free and vegan so you know as a drugstore product it hits my like baseline requirements but and like i was in need of a new daily eye cream now it is it does have a slight tint as you can tell maybe like on my skin it looks a little bit whiter especially under these lights but it has a bit of like a peachy tint when you blend it out it kind of disappears but what I have noticed and this is why it's a miss is that if you apply just slightly too much it does have like a shimmer to it almost and I think that's why it has this like brightening quality is because it's got like a it's got there this like reflective quality to it. So the shimmer or like whatever the ingredient is in here that gives it that effect, that like brightening effect. It's not really brightening. All it does is like reflecting the light off of your under eyes. But I've noticed that especially on like a no makeup day, if I, if I was wearing this and I was applying too much that I would literally end up with like little under eye masks of eye cream that was very noticeable because of this like reflective quality. The word I'm looking for is escaping me right now, but it's it's like a pearlescence, but it's not just glowy like it's an actual there is an ingredient in here. There is like an actual like shimmer and it's very subtle and like if you like you can work at it and really rub it away. But there has been a few times where I've put on my eye cream, put on the rest of my makeup, then gone back into the bathroom or like gone outside and sort of looked at myself and I was like, what is this like? And again, because I'm I have not porcelain skin I have a tint to my skin I've got a little bit more melanin than you know most white girls it was very obvious on me it didn't just fade away into my skin it literally looked like you know I put like a shimmery champagne eyeshadow under my eyes especially on the outsides here so I just I don't love that I don't want Unless I intentionally put on a product that has like shimmer or glitter, I don't want just my average everyday products to have that. I'll, I'll finish using it, it's fine. I just now have to be mindful of like accidentally leaving like shimmery blobs or you know very reflective blobs under my eyes. So it just, it just requires a little bit of extra work and for an eye cream that's not what I'm looking for. I want my eye cream to be simple and effective, uh, not with a side of accidental shimmer. This is a real hit. This is the Inner Sense Refresh, a dry shampoo. Now, can you hear that? It's a liquid. Well, sort of. It's like a liquid to powder. It comes in a non-aerosol, like kind of spray pump. I'll do it. I don't know if you could hear that. It's, it's like a, comes out as like a foam. Smells, oop. <laughs> Smells like all of their other hair products, kind of orangey, citrusy. So it comes out in a foam. I like to rub it between my hands, kind of like emulsify it, and then massage it into my crown, especially into my bangs. So it does get them a little bit wet. And then you can either let it air dry or you can blow it dry. Now where my bangs are concerned, this has been a great way to refresh my bangs because again as i was saying my bangs have a tendency to just like get in a bad mood and like because i have a severe cowlick on this side and not on this side i get super flat here and super bouncy here i want the bounce on both sides of my bangs to be even so it usually requires a little bit of like convincing on this side so having like a wet to dry shampoo dry shampoo like that really gives me the ability to like quickly kind of do a course correction on my bangs without getting into trouble. It also smells really nice. It doesn't leave like a super intense cast once it is dry. And I like it because you can just let air dry and then it is pretty effective. I don't use spray dry shampoos. I only use powders. So this was like kind of my way of like getting a little bit into the middle there. And I have found that it's just very effective. Obviously, if you have very dark hair like mine and you are using a powder dry shampoo, unless it is explicitly for dark hair or has some kind of tint to it, like you are going to end up with a little bit of a cast, which just means that like you really have to massage it in. You got to brush it out. And, you know, last case scenario, just take a blow dryer upside down and kind of like wave it around just to kind of move the brightest of those particles. 
but I do really like this. As you can tell, like, I'm not sure actually. I've not used that much and I've had it for quite a while. It's very much my like in an emergency bang corrector, but it's been great to have because sometimes like I, I don't love washing my hair every day. I don't love washing my hair when I need to go into Toronto on Wednesdays for my work, like in-studio work day. I find that if I wash my hair and then go into the city, I'm literally just wasting a wash because as soon as my hair touches Toronto atmosphere, it just feels and looks disgusting. So this is a great solution if I wake up and like my second or third day hair isn't looking like super professional or great. I can just do a quick little refresh, especially in the top and my roots and my bangs. Perfect, love it. There are a few products that Innersense has made that I've tried that I didn't like. I've spoken about two of them and it was not that I didn't like them, they just didn't do anything magical for me. But this one and my like daily kind of cream texturizer. Chef's kiss. Okay, um, a mist that actually surprised me. It is the Rose Ink Lip and Cheek Color in the shade Delphine. Now I got this in one of those like kind of Sephora gift sets. It's the same, and that's the other mist that's here. We're gonna talk about that right next. It is, I, I think I mentioned it like two Sephora sales ago um, and I really wanted it because there was a bunch of products in the little kit that I just wanted to try and it was a great and affordable way to kind of like get access to those things. And this was one of two full size products. And I was actually really excited because I'd heard a lot of great things about the Rose Ink blushes, but I, there's just something about this shade that's like, maybe for the folks like Hannah Louise Poston and you know, Kathy who love a desaturated shade this is something that makes them really happy but this is not something that makes me really happy i thought that this was going to be based on like the product photos like very much i guess it's kind of similar to the back but even this like shade the sticker on the back i feel like is deceiving i thought that it was going to be a lot peachier um and it's just kind of like a soft desaturated peach like it's not a bad color it's also like chunking up on the back of my hand but like it's quite a like natural I'm sure it would be like a lovely flush on me but there's just something about the shade that just isn't doing it for me I put it on my cheeks once and was just kind of like no that's not what I want from a blush shade I have all kinds of other blushes that I'm over the moon for and this just wasn't hitting the mark so this like the ritual defeat lip gloss is going to go into the bag and my mom and my sister can kind of take a pick at what they would like and if they don't then I don't care what they do with it after that. My next, actually we'll go for this one, my next miss and this one I think is like a controversial miss. I haven't heard anyone else dislike this product but this is the other reason why I bought that same Sephora kit that the Rose Ink blush was in because this was the other full size product in that and this is the Tower 28 mascara. Package delightful, super cute. Shape of the wand Delightful. I love a curved wand. Traditionally, those have served me very well, especially because I have pretty straight lashes. But there's just something about this that does not work for me. This has been the most unexpected miss out of all of the products I have here. I don't know why. Maybe it just needs to mature more in the tube, but like when I curl my lashes, if I put on my waterproof mascara, the one from Essence, like for the most part it holds the curl and like gives me the volume and the boost that I want. Like it's, it, it does what it says it's going to, which is why I love it so much. And because you know, it's cost effective. I, I love the way that my eyelashes look when I wear it. And you know, added bonus is that it's waterproof and you know, so when I'm crying all the time, <laughs> it holds its own. Everything I'd heard about this Tower 28 mascara was just accolades and praise and everyone loved this so much. I do not love this so much. What is so special about this mascara? I told my friend Chani that I didn't love this mascara. They love this mascara. When I told them, there was a gasp. 
<laughs> there was genuine shock that I did not like this mascara. I just, I truly, I don't understand. When I put it on my eyelashes, even if I like really hold the eyelash curler and like try and get like a perma crimp into my eyelashes, this goes on my eyelashes instantly flat. I can't really get any kind of like good volume out of this formula. I don't know if it's just too wet or if it's just far too heavy for like my fine hair. I, I don't know, but I cannot stand it. I'm gonna keep it around because it's open and I feel guilty. And again, like it's going on my eyelashes. It's not really the kind of product that you can like share or you like shouldn't share. So I'll continue to use it for like no makeup makeup days. Like I find that it's, it's okay if I keep it on my upper lashes kind of on the outsides of them but it just like my eyelashes like flop they fully droop instantly maybe it just needs to mature in the tube a little more and then I can find some kind of like symbiotic relationship with this but I really just think this is a giant miss for me and I will never purchase this again. I find that really disappointing. I really wanted to like it again because so many other people have been raving about this since it came out. But for me, it is just such a capital M miss. Let's do a hit. Something that like really brought me joy. Such a hit. This is the Mala the Brand candle in the scent Milk and Sugar. Now I first heard about this brand thanks to Jamie Page Beauty. I think she started talking about this brand when she discovered the scent or the candle scent called cereal, which literally smells like you're just, you've got Fruit Loops filling your entire house. Not personally a scent that I want in my space, but I did stick my nose in that candle when I found this, this brand. I found it at Indigo. Um, they had a wide range of the Mal of the brand candles, which was lovely. Um, I love that it's in like the metal tin. It has the kind of like campfire wooden wick, which I love in a candle so much. Unfortunately, I actually did a very poor job of burning this specific candle. And so there's still about like this much wax left in it, but I completely butchered the wick. So it like just, it doesn't hold a flame anymore. And I feel so bad because the smell of the milk and sugar one is like, the scent of my dreams. It's so delicious. It's everything that I want. It smells like, smells like a cookie, you know? We've talked about this before. I just want to smell like a cookie or a cupcake and it's truly delightful. I love that Mal the brand is Canadian and soy wax. And I'm pretty sure that there's like a tree planted for every candle made or something. So like there's also kind of like a give back aspect to this. And I believe Mal the brand is based out in Vancouver or somewhere out west in Canada. But yeah, such a delight while this was burning and before I ruined the wick. I had such an, a lovely, wonderful time burning this candle in my home and it just made everything smell so wonderful. And I love the wooden wicks. I love that, that like fireplace crackle sound. If we're talking about the very few, you know, ASMR type things that I enjoy, that is one of them. That is a sound that I can totally tolerate that doesn't completely bugger up my misophonia. So as a whole, this is just such a wonderful hit and I'm just, I'm mad at myself for ruining the wick and not being able to enjoy the full candle, but I have already repurchased another one so that I can start enjoying this scent again. And I find that with these candles, I think it depends on where you place it in your house. If you place it kind of near like an open window, there's, you know, fresh air and a breeze. It does interrupt the throw of the scent a little bit, but I find that the throw is actually at a reasonable point. Like it's not so aggressive or it's like it becomes overwhelming and ever and like you can't get a scent out of your nose. Um, but it's also like you don't need to be <laughs> sitting right over top of the burning candle to actually smell it. So it, it's got a really good throw. One more thing that was totally a hit. This is the Tease Shake It Off Green Tea and Echinacea Blend. It is 15 pyramid tea bags um, and I believe that the tea bags are 100% biodegradable. It's all natural sourced from ethical tea partnership members and it's wheat and dairy free. After I bought this, I started seeing this tea pop up everywhere, including at Indigo. Um, but I bought this from the detox market. I wanna say sometime in the winter when like everyone was kind of dealing with, you know, the colds and the flus of the season. And this was just such a delight when I was starting to feel kind of that cold come on. Just, you know, the, the sniffles and the general like wintertime malaise because everyone is sick and in close quarters and like sharing germs. And it was just a really, 
delightful tea. I love tea so much. It is my preferred hot beverage. I will have one coffee in the morning and then I, it's pretty much all I want or can tolerate uh, unless I'm like super tired, but I love tea. And when I find a tea that also like does something for me, it feels extra special. I love a green tea. I love echinacea. And I just, I thought that this was just really good. And I got this for my boyfriend as well. And I think he really enjoyed it, um, especially with some like honey. So yes, as a whole, I really have been enjoying this tea. I also just love that it comes in this little container and I'm pretty sure that you can keep these containers and then just order more tea and then refill them. So I think that's also great. And it was blended and packaged in Canada. So love that for me too. Because of the green tea, it's kind of like a medium caffeine level, high antioxidants. And I think you steep it based on your preference. I prefer a stronger tea. So I just actually keep my tea bag in the cup, but you know, if you're looking for a tea, especially one that like gives you a little bit of an immunity boost and makes you feel a little bit better, highly recommend. And I don't know if I already mentioned this, I can't remember, my brain is going 5,000 miles a minute, but Indigo now carries this brand as well. Okay, another miss, and I've used this in a number of videos, but like, it's this Revolution Soap Brow, or they are calling it a Soap Brow. I don't love the packaging, I just, I think, I don't know. I just think we could have done a little bit more, something more elegant with the packaging here. Um, I also just generally don't love a packaging that's like such, got like such a high shine finish because it will look dirty the moment you bring it home. <laughs> uh, it's just fingerprints and gross stuff everywhere. Um, it does come with this kind of little like toothbrush style brush, which you're supposed to use, but I've never really liked this style of a brush, so I was just using my own spoolies. But like, literally just buy a bar of soap you really don't need to buy a fancy soap brow i've been there done that bought the original like soap brows soap brow and it was also just fine like just use a clear glycerin bar of soap that you can get for like one or two dollars you can cut it in half it will last you forever and it just it does the exact same thing there's just literally no reason to spend ten dollars or more on a soap brow product and i just also didn't find that it was like especially effective and again like with so many other things if you have you know a highly pigmented skin or hair if you overuse it you're at risk of getting like a white cast or just like having the like white residue of the product in your hair or on your skin and it's just it's more hassle than it's worth so if you like soap brows clear glycerin soap bars find a little container put it in that little container make sure that it dries out because the other thing with these is that if you're spraying the soap directly like it's just a hotbed for bacteria because it's once you close it like it has the air has no way to get to this and dry it so like this is still actually damp and that's it's gross it's also going in the garbage i hate that i have to create waste by doing that but like say la vie okay let's just end with the positive so i'm going to do last but not least two more misses this is the Fit Glow Beauty Day Essence, which I bought because I loved the night essence so much. So I thought the day essence certainly has to be wonderful. I, what does this do? What is this other than a very expensive spray bottle that is allegedly eco-friendly because it's refillable? No, as we've talked about, I got rid of like the exterior part of the package, which is also just plastic and isn't even that attractive to keep on your vanity because it was so cumbersome to like take off the stupid lid and then hold it in this weird like old school baby bottle where like the bottle, like where the milk was on the inside. You know what I'm talking about? If I can find it, I'll stick a picture here, but like old school baby bottles that were like hard on the outside and then the milk went on like a squishy part on the inside. Like kind of the same concept where like, you can just buy this and re-put it in that little hard shell plastic. No, it's not attractive enough for me to do that. And you're just creating double the plastic. It's so stupid. I really, they need to reevaluate what they consider refillable packaging and how that is even remotely eco-friendly or close to whatever, whatever they're trying to accomplish. I'm just not for it. But this as a spray, as an essence, like, Yes, I like the way it smells. The spray is fine. That is a beautiful, fine 
mist, but what does this mist do? Literally, I don't, I don't know. So I'm gonna keep using it until it's done because it was pricey. I think this is another one of the ones though that I did buy from the Green Jungle Beauty Shop on their like flash sale discount. So I don't feel as bad, but like, this is a miss. I actually thought that the Night Essence did something for my skin, but I have not noticed even a remotely positive benefit from this one. Okay, then we have this. This is the 100% Pure Watermelon Cucumber Water Locking Moisturizer with Hyaluronic Acid and Polyglutamic Acid. Don't know what that does. It is like a really, really watery lotion. Very thin, very watery, like almost a serum. The texture, gorgeous. The formula, quite beautiful actually. But it smells like Twizzlers. Is that what watermelon and cucumber combined smell like? <gasps> no, I hate it. And it's not a scent that like dissipates really quickly. Uh-uh, cannot do it. I've, the formula, it's like, it is actually quite an effective moisturizer. It does leave the skin feeling plump and juicy and like it soaks in really well. It would be a great like makeup priming moisturizer because it does have a bit of tackiness to it before it fully dries down. But this, the Twizzler scent, I just, I cannot. Uh-uh, no. I don't particularly love Twizzlers or Nibs or that kind of candy. Sometimes I'll indulge, but like, no, 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 why? Why that scent? Who thought that that was a good idea? Like, not that the package is overly sophisticated. I don't think that any of 100% Pure's packaging is like the most elegant. Some of their formulas certainly have cosmetic elegance, but the scent is such a freaking miss for me. I couldn't even get like a third of the way through this before it just, it got pushed to the side. So that's another one that I think I'm gonna try and pass off onto my mom and my sister. They might not find an issue with the scent, but I, I cannot. I didn't realize that I had, would have such a visceral reaction to it, um, but because of its size, it was actually one of the moisturizers that had made it into like my overnight bag. And I think I used it maybe like for a month of weekends before I was like, I li I, li I literally can't. I, ca I cannot handle smelling like a Twizzler. And like my arm where I, a hand where I applied that drop still smells like it. And I feel like, again, it's not a scent that dissipates over time. It just, it really holds its own and mm -mm, it's not for me. But you know what? We're gonna end on a high note. These are lifestyle. More, we've left all of the beauty behind. Well, one of them is a beauty and lifestyle thing, but mostly I would say lifestyle. The first is this set of three cork massage balls from Half Moon. And I had been looking for and wanting a pair of massage or a set of massage balls for so long because I have all kinds of aches and pains. I get a lot of tension, especially in my upper back, especially under my right shoulder blade. That is like where I hold all of my existential dread. <laughs> and so, you know, if I don't have someone to kind of like give me a little back rub or no one is willing to because sometimes that gets annoying, um, I now have these little massage balls and you can either use them while lying on the ground or like put one up against the wall and kind of like work it. And you can use it on pretty much any spot, part of your body. Like the small one is actually really nice on the back of your neck and you can even just use it with your hand and apply pressure. Um, I find that if you're up against a wall with these, you have a little bit more control over the pressure versus laying on the ground where obviously like gravity is, you know, impacting the extent of the pressure. Um, so I think these are slightly different sizes and then you have one small one. And it's just cork. And these were also, I think, there was some like big like door crasher sale at Indigo a few months ago and I bought these. I also bought my boyfriend a set because I was like, I feel like we could both use these, especially like he's playing soccer now. So, you know, there's bound to be some kind of injury 
and it's just it's nice to have kind of as part of your overall like stretch, stretching and exercise routine just to also work out some of those knots that maybe can't be addressed with stretches or like a foam roller so if you also have like you know any kind of muscular discomfort sciatic nerve issues which i also suffer from get yourself some cork massage balls they're really really lovely and have been kind of life-changing like even if just during the day especially around my period is kind of when my sciatic has a tendency to flare up and just like leaning against the wall with this kind of like in this area and just adding just doing a bit of like a wall sit and kind of like moving up and down with the ball there it really helps and you don't have to do it for very long like even just the the singular pressure point for like a minute 30 seconds is super effective so it was just it was a very much an, a long overdue process and i'm really glad that i finally pulled the trigger on that and you know the fact that they were on sale really helped i think i ended up getting them for like 12 or 14 dollars when usually they're around efforts of 20 sometimes 30 depending on the brand but really love them okay this is my first kind of splash into the pond of beauty tools which i did last month and it honestly even though there's no like specific expert technology with this tool i've been really enjoying it like it's a legitimate hit sure i could have bought one that was like slightly less expensive but I'm really glad that I bought this. This is the Detox Market Glow Vibrations Face Wand. So it is one wand with four interchangeable heads. It comes in this lovely little box that says, talk about good vibes. Stress, puffiness, dullness, fine lines, whatever curveballs life throws at your skin, this vibrating face wand gets you back to gorgeous. Okay, sold. So here it is in the box. The default head is this like, circular head. I'll pull it right out. It is rose quartz. And it's smooth, even though it looks a little bit textured. That's just the nature of the stone. It's entirely smooth. And this can be used all over the face and neck. Then there is straight and flat head which is, or the straight bar rather, which is meant for your jaw, your forehead, and your neck. Then there is the curved bar, which is for your cheeks and your eyebrows. Although honestly, because it's curved, I also like to use this on my jaw. And then the last head is this kind of teardropped shaped pointed bar and this is supposed to be for between your eyebrows and for the nape of your neck. Now again, unlike the new face, there's no particular kind of like technology here. It is just a single wand. It is battery operated. So, you know, take that into consideration depending on who you live with, because as soon as anyone hears this sound, it can be a little embarrassing. Not that self-pleasure should be embarrassing. Like we all do it. Some of us just like to have toys, but this is not that. <laughs> this just vibrates. So it's, there's a single battery in here. It twists on and off. So you twist it on for it to vibrate. And then once it's vibrating, you just start massaging your face, preferably and probably exclusively on clean skin so you do your nighttime skincare routine that's probably when most of us have the most time so your skin is cleansed and you've applied your nighttime skincare i like to start this while my last layer is still absorbing so that there's not any resistance and then i just like to sit in front of my tv and just massage and it's just really honestly soothing. And I really like the singular kind of like little dome here with the rose quartz because it 
is a little, it feels a little bit more gentle than the curved, and I'm not actually applying it to my face, obviously. But you do this all over your face for like 10, 15 minutes, however long I think you can tolerate it. I don't think there's any negative side effect to doing this, and it's just a vibration. And with that vibration and the massage, the intention really, I think, is just for like, you know, maybe some lymphatic drainage, increased circulation, some relaxation. For me especially, and like maybe anyone who has like diagnosed TMJ, I definitely like clench my teeth at night, probably due to an excess amount of stress and anxiety. And so I wake up often with headaches, but I've noticed that I have far less of that, or I have had less of that when I'm really using this little wand and really concentrating it on my jaw area and like neck area. I'm noticing just a lot less tension in my jaw and whatever, I can't remember what this muscle is called, but like this in here. Some people, you know, shoot that up with Botox. I don't, no judgment. I don't want to do that yet, I'm afraid. But this little vibrating wand just with some very gentle pressure and that massage has definitely, I've seen an improvement. And it's just nice. I find that my skin just feels better. I feel better. And I think, you know, again, aside from the lack of technology, what this is doing is just, it's it's a forced 10 to 15 minutes with yourself. Being fully in tune with yourself and like having that tactile moment where you're actually like physically engaged with your own body, it makes a difference. It is self-care at the like baseline level. Do you need a fancy, you know, vibrating wand to do that? No, you could literally just do your own little face massage. You could just use the gua sha. You could just use your fingers. But there is just something nice and a little bit more, you know, decadent when you're using a fancy tool, especially when it's like rose gold and there's like rose quartz. But for me, I have noticed specifically with the tool is that even with the like curved in or straight bar, I just can get a different kind of like pressure, especially on my jaw where I do get some of that tension. The rest of my face certainly like, like manual massage would probably be more than enough but specifically in here and with that vibration I, I have just noticed already what I've said is just a little bit an ease in tension and so that has been a huge hit for me this month and that's all of it that's all the hits and misses and honestly now that I've addressed these misses and know that I need to address the big miss that I talked about at the beginning of this video which will hopefully I'll I can do that later tonight and just, you know, not shame spiral and just kind of address that as a mature, emotionally intelligent at all. But I feel better. I feel better. And now that I've talked about all of the misses here, I can, without regret, just move on with my life. I can put them aside. I can, you know, pass them along where they are passable. And for all the hints, it's just a nice reminder, it kind of, you know, is a revisitation of some gratitude when you just kind of reevaluate things in your life that are actually good. And they don't have to be huge things, it can be teeny tiny moments. Sometimes they're material moments, sometimes they're not. Regardless, it is always just nice to reflect on the stuff that is actually a hit and it's making us happy and it's bringing us joy. With all of that being said, I hope that there are all kinds of little and big things bringing you joy in your life. And I think I'm going to sign off, maybe do a workout, which is another thing that is like good for my mental health and should bring me joy. <laughs> and I will bid you adieu and see you in my next one.